Alex, get down here! Alex, I said come down here now! Just a minute, Mom. I'll be right down. I said no! Coming, Mom! Alex, you lazy piece of crap! You better get down here this instant! I said I'm coming! <sighs> Annoying hag. I'll chop off your head if you dare talk to me like that again! I'm sorry, Mom. You're sorry? Yes, you are! You get sorry grades in school! You've got sorry friends! All the girls tell you I'm sorry, but I won't go out with you! You're even a sorry excuse for an athlete! I said I'm sorry. I won't do it again. You never do anything! You're just as lazy and useless as your no-good father! I can't believe I let that Oh, stuff me! I'll show him! I'll stuff him! I'll see how he likes it! Next, I'll teach that rotten devil spot of his! Got all those years wasted just to raise the spinning image of that pig! If only I had a daughter, I could have shaped her into something I would actually be proud of! And not that crater-faced loser that expects me to wait on him every second of the day! <sighs> What a workout! Almost as hard as the slaughtering itself! It'll all be worth it, though, just to see the look on his face. Technically, all this meat belongs to me. I fed it for 20 years and made sure it lived a life of luxury. Even the Queen of England would be jealous of. Now it's all coming due. Something I should have done decades ago. Alex! How long have you been standing there? Were you just going to watch while I did all the work? You really are just like your father. I came to help. I just didn't know what was going on in here. Remember what I said would happen if you kept talking back to me? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. What do you need me to do? What does it look like I need from you? How about a little help cleaning? I mean, look! This place is a mess! Go grab a bucket and mop for all this wet and gushy stuffing on the floor! Wait, is this really the stuffing for the turkey this year? Yes, it is! Do you have a problem with that? It's just... I... Spit it out already! I don't have all day! I thought stuffing was supposed to be like bread and stuff. And? This is all raw guts and a bunch of gross things. I don't want to eat this. How dare you call my cooking gross, you ungrateful little leech! Ah! Oh, please, get it off! Get it off! <laughs> Consider yourself lucky I didn't chop you up and keep you in there. Now, get that mop and start cleaning all this up. Yes, ma'am. Hey, if I catch any hair in the food, I'm holding you personally responsible. You got that? Yes, ma'am. Now hurry up and mop. Dinner has to be done in an hour. Chop, chop. Mom, can I get a shower after I clean up? Only if you finish fast enough. Now get going. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Dinner is ready! Oh god, why couldn't it have been tofu or something? Alex! I'm coming! Open your eyes, Alex! What do you think? Looks delicious, doesn't it? Yeah, I can't wait to try it. Now, I know it looks like a lot, but I want you to make sure that you eat the turkey and the stuffing in one bite, okay? This is my first time making this recipe, so I need you to eat it the way it's meant to be eaten. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead now. What horrible concoction has she managed to put together this time? If only Dad were here to witness this. Come to think of it, where is Dad? Ahem. What are you waiting for? Try it! Uh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> well, what do you think? It's... it's good. Uh, I like it. 
I love it, actually. I'm glad you enjoy it. There's plenty for the two of us to enjoy. Aren't there supposed to be three of us? What do you mean? The whole family is here. <laughs> Haven't you figured it out by now? He's right here with us. Right between where you and I are sitting. Ah! This story was inspired by a disturbing case revolving around a woman named Omaima Nelson, who allegedly took the life of her own husband named Bill Nelson around Thanksgiving. The woman allegedly committed the act with a pair of scissors and a clothes iron. Omaima claims that she did it in revenge because Bill allegedly cheated and assaulted her multiple times in their relationship. The woman then dismembered the man and then allegedly cooked him, mixing his remains with leftover turkey and disposed of him in a garbage disposal. Neighbors claim that they heard the disposal unit running for hours after the time of Bill's death. She told her psychiatrist that she had cooked her husband's ribs and barbecue sauce and eaten them, but later denied this. Everyone always says that the holidays can be difficult times, but I think I've experienced that more than most. People still can't believe it when I tell them what happened. It's all true though. It happened back in 2012, around Thanksgiving. I had been married to a cop for a few years. I liked the idea of being married to an officer. It made me feel like I'd be protected. Our relationship wasn't that great though. We were close at the beginning, but my husband started drifting away as time went on. We became less intimate and sometimes went days without even talking to each other. That was mostly because of him though. He was always at work, and when he was home he'd do work in the backyard. I often wondered how he could come home from a 12 hour shift and still want to do yard work. He was practically obsessed with it. I never knew exactly what he did out there. We became more and more distant each day. Sometimes I would try to talk to him more, but he would always be in a really angry mood and snap back at me. I assumed it was because of his work. Being a cop had to be very stressful. He never talked about it though. Despite everything, we had planned to make the most of Thanksgiving that year. In fact, my husband said, Hey, let me cook Thanksgiving dinner this year, okay? He actually seemed pretty excited about it. I was happy to see him finally take an interest in spending time with me. We went to sleep the night before Thanksgiving, and I felt pretty happy about the upcoming celebration. Later that night, I woke up from a noise in the room. I realized that it was my husband moving around. I was about to ask him what he was doing, but he left the room so suddenly. He was obviously trying to make as little noise as possible. I felt really groggy, but it was too suspicious for me to go back to sleep. He had to be up to something. I waited a few minutes to make sure he wasn't coming back. I then heard the back door open and knew that he must be stepping outside. I thought it was strange as hell as my husband wasn't a smoker and had no business being out this late at night. I figured he was going to do some yard work or something. I wanted to get a closer look. So I slowly crept over to my bedroom window and peeked out through the curtain. My husband was outside, wearing a black hoodie, black pants, and black boots. He looked incredibly shifty which was very uncharacteristic of him. He was a cop after all. He didn't usually dress like he was about to rob someone or something. I watched as he headed over to the shed and went inside. A few seconds later, he came out dragging a large garbage bag behind him. I started to freak out. The bag looked exactly like a body. I told myself that it had to be cop gear or something like that. There was no way that my husband had a body in a garbage bag. I still felt terrified. There was just something so creepy about seeing him out there, dressed in all black that late at night. He continued to drag the bag through the yard, then suddenly stopped and looked up at me at my window. 
I immediately ducked and started freaking out even more. I had no idea if he'd seen me. I crawled back to bed as fast as I could. Then I listened for any sign that he was coming back to the room. Instead, I heard the car start and then drive off a few seconds later. I got up and checked out the window to make sure that he was really gone. The driveway was empty. The whole situation was so sketchy. I didn't know what was going on, but I felt very uneasy. There was no good explanation for what my husband was doing. I looked around the house to see if he had left any clues behind, but there was nothing. Then I saw a small light coming from the den. I went inside to find my husband's laptop sitting on the desk still turned on. I checked to see what he had been up to. There was a blog post up on the screen that appeared to be from the account that he was signed in with. I didn't know why he would be writing a blog in the middle of the night, but I started reading what he said. As I read it, I immediately started to feel extremely sick. The whole post discussed different fantasies of my husband kidnapping me, chopping me up, and eating me for Thanksgiving. It went on for pages and pages, each fantasy more detailed than the last one. He even talked about abducting multiple women and doing the same thing to them. It was all so horrible and disgusting. I felt incredibly nauseous. I couldn't believe that my husband had written such horrific things. After the initial shock wore off, I realized that I couldn't stay there waiting for my husband to come back. I changed clothes and headed over to my neighbor's house to call the cops. The neighbors were very confused as to why I was disturbing them so late at night, but I quickly explained everything to them. I called the police and they came right over to wait for my husband. A few hours later, he came back and they immediately arrested him for conspiring to murder his wife and the other women he had written about. Later on, it was revealed that my husband had already kidnapped and killed someone. He had hid their body in the shed which is what I saw him disposing that night. I am convinced that my husband was a cannibal. I can't imagine what would have happened to me if I hadn't caught him that night. Till this day, I'm still traumatized every Thanksgiving. This story was inspired by a case about a former NYPD officer named Gilberto Vale, who fantasized about kidnapping, butchering, and eating women for Thanksgiving. Gilberto's ex-wife had allegedly discovered reams of cannibalistic content on his computer and immediately reported to the authorities. His post contained detailed and disturbing plots about barbecuing women and eating their ribs. The man has since been sentenced before he could have any kind of feast he fantasized about before Thanksgiving. This all happened years ago when I was a teenager. I lived with my parents then out in a quiet neighborhood in the suburbs. Nothing ever really happened there. That is, until one year around Thanksgiving. I'm an only child, so my parents got me a dog to keep me from feeling lonely. I loved the dog and spent a lot of time with him whenever I was home. I thought of him as my best friend. His name was Cooper. Besides Cooper, my family and I were friendly with our next door neighbors. My parents were close with the parents and I was good friends with their son Tyler. We'd often all go over to their house or invite them over for dinner. It was nice to have a friend so close by. Tyler was a very large kid, at least a couple inches taller than me and much heavier set. The guy ate a lot, and he would pig out every time my family would invite him and his parents over for Thanksgiving each year. We got along great and hung out all the time. Tyler would come with me when I took Cooper for walks around the neighborhood, and would game with me a couple times a week. Besides eating a lot, Tyler was really into the outdoors and hunting and everything. He had this thing where he would practice shooting a bow and arrow in his backyard. My family and I were happy to live next to Tyler and his parents. That is, until Thanksgiving. That changed everything. One night, the night before Thanksgiving, I was tossing and turning, not fully able to fall asleep. I kept hearing noises in the backyard. There was a sound like something scraping against the fence. I didn't know what it could be, but it was really annoying. Then, Cooper started barking loudly, and that just made me even more annoyed. Cooper, shut up! It's the middle of the night! I knew he just had to be barking at some animal out there. It happened before. I thought about going out there to calm him down, but I was so tired. I didn't want to get out of bed. I tried to ignore it as much as I could. Finally, Cooper stopped barking, and I was able to fall asleep. The next morning, I woke up pretty late, since I'd been up for so long the night before. Something felt off, but it took me a while to realize what it was. Then it hit me. Cooper wasn't barking. This was unusual. 
Cooper always started barking in the morning until someone went outside to greet him. He didn't like to be left alone for so long. I figured he just had to still be asleep, so I wasn't too worried. I took my time getting out of bed, and then went out to the backyard to check on Cooper. When I got there, though, Cooper was gone. I looked all over the backyard, and he was nowhere to be seen. I started to panic, but I thought maybe my parents had already let him inside. I checked all over the house, but he wasn't there either. I was really freaking out. The backyard was completely fenced in. There was no way that Cooper could have gotten out by himself. I asked my parents and they hadn't seen him all morning. I ran over to the house behind us and asked them, but they hadn't seen anything either. I even asked Tyler, but he said the same. No one had seen Cooper anyway. My parents and I later went around the whole neighborhood, asking people if they had seen a dog and looking for Cooper ourselves. We didn't have any luck anywhere. I was completely distraught. I couldn't bear to think of my dog being lost anywhere. Then I remember the noises I heard the night before. That had to have been when Cooper got out. I wish more than anything that I had gone to check on him then. Then I remember the noises I heard the night before. My parents and I were starting to lose hope, but we went to one more house. Its backyard was very close to ours, so we hoped that they would know something. A man answered the door. He said that he hadn't heard anything, but he had security cameras set up around his house and in the backyard. He let us check the footage. At first we didn't see anything. Then, suddenly, someone came sneaking up to our fence. It was hard to make him out in the dark, but I suddenly caught a glimpse of his face. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was Tyler. He was looking over our fence into the backyard and he had his bow and arrow with him. I watched with horror as he slowly brought it out and fired an arrow into the yard. After that, Tyler hopped the fence and disappeared from the camera's view. He climbed back over a few seconds later. He had Cooper with him. He shot him with the arrow. I screamed at the camera in complete disbelief. <coughs> Tyler carried Cooper back towards his house and was gone. I was terrified. I had just watched my friend kill my dog in the middle of the night. My parents immediately reported Tyler to the police. He was arrested the same day. They discovered that Tyler had actually cooked and eaten my dog for Thanksgiving dinner. The whole time I had been friends with some kind of sick lunatic. He was charged with armed burglary, armed trespassing, theft of livestock, and animal cruelty. My parents and I haven't talked to the neighbors since. We moved out a few years after that day. Tyler was still in prison, but it was still too hard to be so close to where it all had happened. I've never forgiven myself for not checking on Cooper that night. I still can't believe someone I had been so close with could have done what he'd done. Tyler had to be some sort of psychopath. I'm still traumatized by Thanksgiving to this day. The story was inspired by a real life incident that happened on Thanksgiving. One Florida family had their pet turkey named Tom the Turkey kidnapped and killed by a bow and arrow. The robbery happened in South Florida on the victim's six acre property. Early on Monday, the victim got up to feed his 50 animals and realized there was something wrong. There were blood and feathers in Tom's pen and Tom was nowhere to be found. When the victim turned to his security cameras, the video showed one man snatching Tom while another ran along the fence. The victim went to the police who later tracked down two men who admitted that they had entered Tom's pen and took him out with a bow and arrow. They then slung the animal into the back of their pickup truck. When the police caught up with them, they said they were on their way to butcher the bird in preparation for Thanksgiving. Police arrested Joshua Anderson and Jacob Prava and charged them with armed burglary and various other charges. 